Well, NASCAR is finally back in town. It's time for the Fan Shield 500 weekend at Phoenix Raceway. Devin Henry here on the inside lane and joining us to get ready for all the action. Three big races in March. He is the Fox play-by-play -play voice of the Gander RV and Outdoor Truck Series, pit reporter for the Xfinity and Cup Series, and a longtime contributor to the racing community. From Carmel, Indiana, it's Vince Welch. Vince, thanks for joining me, man. Happy to be with you, Devin. Looking forward to uh, the racing, racing this weekend. It's going to be a fun weekend. I know that you guys have had plenty of fun weekends far, 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 far. Uh, on the west side, you had some voice loss issues in Daytona. You got red eyes every single week. What, how healthy are you coming to Phoenix? It's early in the year. Usually most athletes, they get injured late in the year. But so far, it's been a tough start of the year for you guys. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I just uh, had a bad cold, got a bad cold in Daytona, and it settled in my throat, unfortunately. And, um, you know, you can deal with, with feeling poorly, but it's tough to deal with not having a voice in our business. So, um, you know, I didn't feel awful. It just, uh, it, the cold just settled right there in my voice, in my throat, and, and I just didn't have any voice. So that was that was a struggle, obviously, and then, uh, but you know, I made a turn for the better about the Thursday of that next week, and uh, and felt a lot better um, in in Las Vegas, and then, of course, this past weekend in California was uh, was good, and and uh, looking forward to Phoenix this weekend. It's one of my favorite trips. I love coming out to that racetrack, and and uh, been coming out there for a long time uh, back in the. The IndyCar days, and uh, even when USAC used to run out there in the old Copper Classic days. Um, so it's uh, it's one of my favorite stops on the circuit, and I'm looking forward to getting out there this weekend. Oh, yeah. So, so much fun when Silver Crown used to come out to town. They had a little spurt there for a little bit, but uh, still waiting, hoping one day we get IndyCar and Silver Crown to come on back over here. But looking at this weekend, a lot of new things. It's the first time that we're going to see the new rules package for short tracks, quote-unquote, quote unquote, for this one-mile dog-legged oval, but we have new tires as well, higher grip, but also higher wear. What's kind of the expectation coming into this weekend for the teams heading to Phoenix and also knowing it's a championship race in November? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, those are all good points, Devin. I think that, you know, the package itself of the higher uh, horsepower, lower downforce, similar to what um, you know they ran there in 2018 so I think that the teams have a general idea of about, uh, of what to expect you mentioned the tire wear and and that's really something that the the drivers and the teams have really been fighting for over the course of um, you know the past several years they they like a tire that wears out um, not blows out but wears out and you know, when that happens it uh, you know you really got to take care of the tires during the course of your run some do a better job of that than others so you've got comers and goers and uh, during the course of your you know of your fuel run so um, you know works I think that worked out pretty well last weekend in in California um, we'll see something similar I think this weekend at uh, Phoenix they also put the traction compound down again uh, this year for uh, the race uh, this weekend um, that'll be a little bit lower down into the groove which I think will play a little bit more of a role than than previous and um, uh, you know I, I I don't think anybody really knows a hundred percent I mean you never know a hundred percent what you're going to get but um, you know I think there's some guessing involved in regards to what it's going to look like this weekend but I, I think that's a good thing and um uh, it keeps the teams keeps the teams on their toes, and uh, you know you got to be good at making adjustments on the fly and making sure that you get your car right in practice. So uh, you know you're at a good starting point uh, when the race rolls. So um, those are there's a lot of challenges in a weekend like this. This is the first time since 2001 since NASCAR actually races at the championship venue earlier on in the year. And I know obviously you as a pit reporter, if you go out and ask the crews. Are, are you taking notes in case you're in the championship four later this year? They're just going to tell you, hey, we're just looking at this weekend here. But with that focus, how do you think some of the workflow might differ knowing that this is the championship location and you might just have the same, uh, the same tires and also the same traction compound on that track? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that there's no question that, you know, that has um, everyone's attention. Um, you know, the fact that they're going to come back here and, and race for the championship in November. Um, so there's, you know, there's there's no doubt about the fact that, um, you know, this is an important race for that reason. Um, you know, there, the, the teams will evolve a lot between now and then. You know, that's, um, you know, I think I saw maybe 250 days, you know, in between races. So there's a lot of development in the cars and in the uh, simulation, um, uh, different ideas and so forth. The weather, you know, never know what it might be like in November compared to what it's going to be like in March. Um, so, you know, there will be some different variables in play uh, when we're back for the, you know, when they're back for the championship in November. But there's no question that, um, you know, you'll take that data that you had and you, you gleaned in March and you'll pour over it again when you're getting ready to race in November. And, and uh, not that it'll be identical, but uh, you'll still, that'll be valuable data for, for all these teams to, uh, to scour before, you know, they get ready for the championship race. Chatting with Fox Pit reporter for the Xfinity and Cup Series this weekend at Phoenix Raceway, Vince Welch. Looking more at the track itself, $178 million in renovations and modernization at Phoenix Raceway. Uh, someone asked me, hey, what's new there? And I said, literally, they only kept one building up, and that was the little canopy <laughs> where the old cup garage was. Everything else was dirt between races. How important is it for the sport of NASCAR to have venues doing things like this to help the fans come out to the racetrack? Well, I, I think it's critical. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, and you see that in every major sport. Uh, you see the stadiums, you know, new stadiums being built, um, renovations being done, and uh, we're starting to see that more often now uh, on the NASCAR side as well. Obviously, uh, Daytona had a huge project. Um, Richmond has had a significant uh, project. I think what they've done in Phoenix is, is phenomenal. I, it's um, when I mentioned earlier, it's one of my favorite my favorite stops and in, in, uh, on the circuit, and certainly what they've done, um, you know, with their renovation there has only enhanced the experience for the fans, uh, not just uh, you know in the seat in the seats in the grandstands, but uh, also in the infield, and uh, made it more of a fan friendly environment, and that's what I think all that you're going to see the tracks are all going to have to lean that way because. The fans expect more now. You know, they go into the NBA arenas that are so nice or the NFL stadiums that, um, you know, that cater to the fans more specifically. And I think you're going to see that uh, on the racing side now, too, where the venues are, are going to make changes in their infrastructure to uh, to be more fan-friendly and, and to give the fans more to do besides just sit in the stands and, and watch the race. And, and I think uh, the folks at Phoenix, uh, you know, with that racetrack have just hit it out of the Park. It's uh, it's a beautiful facility, and they really did a fantastic job. A little bit more on you, a very versatile play-by-play -play announcer. You did many different sports when you were at WNDY. Did you call it Windy? Was it called Windy? Uh, it was in actually it was Indy TV. Yeah. Indy, gotcha. Well, multiple play-by-play -play sports: tennis, basketball, football. You've done a ton. You also do college basketball in the off season, and there's times when you're doing three races in a weekend, not always doing the same position, doing play-by-play -play or pit reporting. How do you keep everything in order in your head when it comes to preparation? And I'm sure that names occasionally start to mix and match sometimes with all the names that you got talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, the more you do it, the more natural it feels. Um, you know, last November I did the truck race there in Phoenix, and then I had to take the red eye and do a college basketball game the next day for Fox. So, um, you know, from that perspective, it's challenging, but more than anything, it's just a matter of having your preparation done in advance. You know, when you've got um, – uh, you know, got two or three races. Uh, the case this weekend, I've got the Xfinity race on Saturday. I've got the Cup race on Sunday, and it's so important to get to the track and already be prepared in regards to, um, you know, what you know, having as much preparation done as possible when you arrive, and um, and then that way you can focus on uh, the task at hand once you're at the track. And then if you get thrown a curveball, you're not playing catch up because you don't have your prep work done. So. 
Um, you know, for us during the season on the racing side, you know, I think it's more of just a constant preparation. You're constantly, you know, you get home from the racetrack on a Monday, um, you, um, you know, you unload your, your suitcase and your work bag. And um, I think different people do it different ways, but I always transfer some notes that I want to keep from that previous weekend's race uh, that I would possibly use moving forward. Um, Then on Tuesday, we have a conference call and, um, you know, a lot of prep work is is done on Tuesday. You're constantly reading um, a lot of the things that have been written about the previous weekend and about the weekend coming up. And uh, on Wednesday, you basically put the fu- finishing touches on your on your preparation that you can do in advance. And Thursday morning, you go to the airport and, and fly. So, um, you know, I think everybody has a system, uh, depending if you've done it long enough in, in our business and depending on which sports you do, you have a system for each sport that you work in. And, um, you know, I think uh, everybody, it's just a, it's a routine, not unlike what the drivers or the teams deal with on a particular weekend. I think you'll find that they have a very specific routine and how they go about their business as well, a checklist in regards to uh, making sure the things get done that are supposed to get done. And it's not, uh, it's really not all that different on our side uh, as well. So, um, you know, it can be, it can be challenging at times, but uh, that's the fun part. You know, it's, it's, uh, if it was easy, everybody could do it. And, and I think more often than not, we enjoy the times when we're challenged because that gives you an opportunity to, to step up and rise to the occasion and, and deliver a performance that uh, you hopefully be, be pleased with at the end. So when you moved to Fox in 2014, obviously you spent so much time doing motorsports already, of course, at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, doing an announcing there and reporting across many different sports. But when you moved to Fox, how did the TV play-by-play opportunity come about? Because you haven't really done any TV play-by-play, more like radio, you know, interns like we see with MRN nowadays. Yeah, I had done a lot of play-by-play, um, you know, more at the regional and local level. Um, you mentioned my time at Indy TV, and, you know, we did AAA baseball there, and we did the professional tennis, and, you know, we did a lot of different events. Uh, it was all um, play-by-play driven. So I'd had a lot of experience on the play-by-play side. Uh, not while I was at ESPN. At ESPN, I did college football, sideline stuff, and um, and uh, was part of the IndyCar and NASCAR crews there. So um, when I came to Fox, it was an opportunity. Actually, um, unfortunately, um, Steve Burns was supposed to be doing the truck series, but um, of course was uh, battling cancer at the time and and um, wasn't able to uh, to come to the track. And so we kind of you know, took that, uh, the truck series play by play by committee, you know, several different, uh, several different, um, announcers did play by play that particular season. And, um, and then ultimately Steve passed away, of course, and, and, um, they had to make a decision moving forward as to who was going to be their, their truck play by play guy. And, and, um, you know, I was chosen from the group that had, you know, had done that job previously when we were all just filling in. So, it was a blessing for me to have an opportunity to get that chance and, you know, to work with uh, Phil Parsons and, and Michael Waltrip, uh, certainly uh, in the booth during those years. And, and um, our producer, Mark Smith and, and director Roger Vinson, I've known for a long time. And so it's, um, it's uh, really been a, a great opportunity for me. One I enjoy it's, you know, I get asked the question a lot, what do you like better, you know, play by play or, or pit reporting and, you know, I, I explain it that, you know, I, I like steak and I also like seafood, um, <laughs> you know, and, and that really is very similar analogy because they are completely different. But at the same time, uh, you know, they challenge you in different ways, but uh, they're also equally rewarding. So um, I really enjoy the opportunity and I enjoy the, the chances when I get to do both in the same weekend. So um it's, um, you know, I think as, as announcers, we all like to be versatile, like to have the opportunity to show our versatility. And I think that that provides me the opportunity when I'm in the booth for trucks and then on pit road for cup. And who doesn't love some good surf and turf? That's perfect. That's a perfect exactly. analogy. <laughs> and I wouldn't be able to end this conversation without talking about your son. His uh, midget car owner used to race sprint cars against my father out the good old Manzanese Speedway back in the day. Of course, your son Dylan Welch driving for Arizona's own Chad Boat with Tucker Boat Motorsports. Was it like watching your son not only break track records and compete, uh, not necessarily in the same branch, but in the sport that you cover, 
while at the same time also doing your profession as well at MRN as a reporter. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been really interesting. You know, when he's racing, um, you know, I'm just dad. Um, so that's extremely nerve wracking uh, <laughs> to sit up in the stands and and uh, watch, uh, you know, watch him, uh, you know, race against competition that you know is is um you know phenomenal and it's amazing there's so many great race car drivers in various um you know grassroots if you want to call it that grassroots series throughout throughout america whether you're talking about open wheel or 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 um you know more of the stock car variety there's so much talent out there and so few of those people get an opportunity to do it but uh professionally or or at the level that would be recognized uh, you know in nascar or indycar whatever the case may be but um you know it's thrilling uh, to see him get to do what he loves to do in the race car and it's been great opportunity for him to drive for tucker boat motorsports and and uh, we've known the boat family for a long long time in fact the very first quarter midget we ever purchased uh, when Dylan was just six years old, um, we bought from the boats. So uh, we've known them for a long, long time, and, and it's kind of come full circle with him having an opportunity to race for, for Chad's organization now. So a great thrill for us, and Chad does a tremendous job. He and uh, Corey Tucker do a tremendous job with, with their program. And then, as you mentioned, you know, Dylan also – is on the broadcasting side, working for NBC on the television uh, in television, and then uh, MRN on the on the radio as uh, on the radio side of things. So, um, I think he's you know certainly challenged in in uh, in that regard professionally, but loves the fact that you know he gets to make his living by going to the racetrack and and um, and you know just trying to get better each and every week as a broadcaster, just as he would uh, as a, as a race car driver. So. Um, it's uh, it's it's a good opportunity for him to be in the garage and interview people like Christopher Bell or Kyle Larson or Chase Briscoe or Ricky Stenhouse, whatever the case may be, and and uh, you know at the same time you know race against them uh, on the racetrack uh, at at particular events during the course of the year as well. So um, it's uh, it's been a good experience for him, and hopefully he'll continue to get that opportunity on both fronts. You two just living the dream, man. I'm telling you, living the dream, racing and covering racing. I can't imagine two better things. Of course, Vince Welch, you'll be able to hear him all weekend long. Five, Fan Shield 500 weekend at Phoenix Raceway, March 6th, 7th, and 8th. You'll be able to hear Vince on the Xfinity LS Tractor 200 and the Cup Series Fan Shield 500. Vince, appreciate the time, man. Appreciate what you've done for the motorsports community over all these years of broadcasting. I appreciate having me on, Devin. Thanks a lot. And, uh... Uh, there's a lot of great race fans out that way and look forward to uh, seeing everybody uh, this weekend. This was the Inside Lane on Sports360AZ.com. Be sure to keep it Sports360AZ for all your racing updates. There's going to be a lot of them this weekend.